It's a bold move to stem the state's widespread measles outbreak. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says the science is clear. Vaccines are safe and effective. And this is about protecting the public's health. But some parents, particularly in the Orthodox Jewish community, are livid. We will not vaccinate. What's going to happen is we're going to either homeschool or we're going to move out of state. Others screamed profanities at lawmakers who say, how can those who claim to be so religious be so vulgar? The country is in the worst measles epidemic since it was eradicated in 2000. There are over a thousand cases nationwide and over 800 of them are in New York. Now, without religious exemptions, will these parents comply? And can this end what's become a potentially deadly outbreak? Now, this law was signed by the governor within minutes of passing. It requires unvaccinated students to get the first dose of each required immunization up to 30 days after they enter a school. How do parents feel about this? They're fired up there in New York. I want to bring in Orthodox community activist Isaac Abraham. Um, Isaac, thanks for being with me. First, will Thank the families... Thank you very much for inviting me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Will the families there in New York comply? Well, first, first let me make a comment on, the, uh, on your opening... Uh, report. Uh, there's no words, and I have to condemn the foul language that, that was used by certain individuals, and I, I really, and this community really doesn't care what the issue is. Uh, you start, try, try to stay in control, and if you want anybody to vote in your favor, you're definitely gonna, not going to get them to vote in your favor if you, you take that action. Having said that, uh, it's not a question of they will comply or not. I think the, the original, let's go back to, to first base where this all started. The New York City mayor came into Williamsburg unannounced, uninformed, one particular morning shotguns blasting, didn't tell anybody a prior to his showing up, and already had threats, fines, basically telling this community that there's a, a measles crisis, and if we're not going to do as he states or his Department of Health stated, then chaos is going to break out out of City Hall and all the agencies. We're going to penalize the schools, we're going to penalize the parents, etc. The communication literally sucked. He never had a meeting with the administrators of the schools prior to that, giving them a warning that, listen, the other children that are vaccinated are in jeopardy, or the ones that are not vaccinated are causing a problem. It's the school's issue. Let the administrator take the action and tell the parents you cannot send your child to school if your child has not been vaccinated. I the was reason child, that they made that the reason that they I, made I was sent sir, to camp, the to reason camp that and, they made that move was because schools were not complying with that. They had to shut down some of the schools. And let me just give you some context here. I spoke with a lawyer who was representing some families there in Brooklyn um, as to whether or not they would have to vaccinate their children. At the time, this was two months ago, there were 329 cases of the measles there in New York City. There's now over 800. That's double in two months. That is why why New York has taken this action. Back to my original question, will these parents vaccinate their kids? Well, that's up. This is, first of all, let's see if they're going to appeal the uh, the, uh, the vote in, in Albany. Will they vaccinate? I don't think they will vaccinate. I think they'll stand their ground and say for religious beliefs or other beliefs. And I think the mother has the same right as the woman has a right on abortion in the third semester that they gave themselves a standing ovation for voting for it. No, they won't. But but having said that, the numbers that, that, that the mayor or the city is throwing is insane and obscene because they run numbers that nobody can check. It's just like polls. But when it came to his lead poisoning problem, that so was this is from the problem. CDC. No, this no, is no, from I, the I CDC. I want to get that point across. He started with four. Then it became 20. The minute they started investigating him, it became 400 and 600. Now, which numbers were there? Were the he numbers come directly numbers from the high? CDC. There are 1,000 cases nationwide, he 800 of them. He has not proved there which hospital had 20, which hospital had 80. The, uh, absolutely no proof of those numbers. No it proof. Comes from and if the it's CDC, in 28 sir. states, why are only five states 
complying with the well, religious the, the uh, reason, exemption. The the reason that they've made that change in New York, according to the officials there, is because that's the epicenter of it. As we point out, the majority of the cases are happening there. So there's something that they need to do so, to stem so, so this. We don't, we don't, well, well the, doctor, the doctor didn't say that in Albany. The doctor in Albany said that it's the job of the legislatures to prevent it from happening. So what is Montana waiting for? They're not going to do a religious exemption because we only have five? And what happens if overnight it spreads to 2,000? Then they will probably ask to have and religious but exemptions pulled there. obviously they don't. We have there. 23 states that have not done this the at all. The larger question, especially for the safety of the public uh, there in New York, is, is how to reverse this trend. There are young children that could be exposed to this, Mr. Abraham. There are young children that are vulnerable that don't have a choice as to whether or not they get vaccinated. They all understand that, but... There's, again, a communication problem. They started out by labeling these people anti-vaxxers. Then they gave them totally other names. But the worst part of it is we don't trust the city. We don't. We just had 9-11. We were told we could breathe the air. 17 years later, this week in Washington, we were begging for assistance and compensation for the people who suffered. What is your alternative? I hear you. If you don't trust My the city, what is your is alternative simple. to stem this issue? The city should issue. never force anything on anybody. It's so then not how do you stop it? Not anything. So then the, how do you stop it? Once the city it? or government gets involved, that's the worst. But the parents and the schools, they have the responsibility. And the responsibility falls on the administrator of the school. And the ones they even closed was only a minor piece of paperwork. It's not that the child was not vaccinated. The children were vaccinated. Vaccinated. It just so happened that they didn't have the two or three documents of those children. The city never said that the children were not vaccinated. It were documents that were failing. There should be a strong communication between administration and the parents. This is what the Department of Health, they're going all upstate to camps now, and the state made it very clear. You come up here, we are forming all administrators of every camp. If the child is not vaccinated, don't bring it up to camp. But to do what the mayor has done using the Jews 17 times in an opening remark, it is, it is just mind-boggling. It is a community that has chosen not to vaccinate because of their religious no, beliefs. That's well, the reference that he is, he is he saying. That that that's, just, remark, that's just the numbers that the Orthodox Jewish community, that's where the epicenter of this measles outbreak is. We were looking is. at 4%. He said 96% did vaccinate. So for 4%, you go that crazy. And again, you keep on pushing the 800. I wouldn't believe if you showed me 300. Tell me where, in NYU, in Mount Sinai, in Columbia, where did you have these? Did you have 30 in the lead poisoning? We knew they all ended up in Woodhall or somewhere else. But so he can't show you the hospital, he can't show you the doctors, he can't show you the patients. Again, I ask you, if, if not this, then what? what? Because do we just do nothing? Do we just let things go status quo where every week we hear from the CDC and we hear more reports of this, these cases? Again, we're coming back to trust. And if we're coming back to trust, there's billions of dollars being part of lawsuits that the drug industry, the pharmaceutical industry are paying out to patients that have been lied to that it works. The city, the mayor, and the Department of Health are the worst people to tell us what to do. In fact, and that's a fact. Who then my, is supposed to solve this? My grandchildren were vaccinated. Who, who, who else? All of them. Who, who else then would solve this? Again, who should it be has put to be solved through normal channels of of medical fields. I did not see. We in the Jewish community use about seven hospitals as priority hospitals. That's Beth Israel, NYU, Columbia Presbyterian, Mount Sinai, and Seaview in Staten Island, as well as my monitors in Brooklyn. I didn't see a single message from any of these hospitals telling its patients or the Jewish community to make sure they're vaccinated. They come up with doctors, one is a dentist, the other guy is a pedi pediatrician. I mean, but the hospital itself, not a single one of them, why? Let me, let me ask you a quick question, Isaac. Did I hear you say that you vaccinated all your, all your grandchildren? All my grandchildren were vaccinated. Why did you choose to vaccinate I them? I didn't and choose, have my, cho you my children have you chose And have to you communicated to others in your community clear. that you, you felt that that was the safest that thing for your grandchildren? I believe those parents who don't want to vaccinate have pushed this religious 
uh, agenda or religious exemption because they felt that that's what's going to get them through, which Albany just destroyed yesterday. But that's the right they have. We can't destroy their, their First Amendment. But you just point out that they were using that as a way to get around it. Because they didn't have any other choice. They didn't want to be, they didn't want to have their children vaccinated. So they, they were most probably contacting people who told them, listen, if for religious rights you don't want to do it, that's fine. But my children decided they want to do it, and I said, fine. I respect your right, and I respect the other woman's rights. But you can't destroy the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, call them jihadis, these women, murderers. What are you going to call these people in Albany who voted against it? Why when did we, they vote yeah. against it? And, and, I, and I hear your passion. No, they're not. I hear your passion about this, and what separates this from other examples that you give is, as in the words of the governor, is the public health crisis that they're seeing, and something needs to stem it. They have, they have okay, sort of bypassed. Okay, if we're talking about the whole public health crisis, let's go this. It, it, it's a trend that started way back in somewhere in October. The Jews don't treat the chickens right before the high holy days, which is going to be next on the agenda about religious exemptions. Then circumcision suction by mouth, which they claim caused HIV, that's going to be next on the agenda. Then they're going to start pulling plugs of critically ill patients in ICU when they're transferred into hospice because it costs too much for the government and Obamacare no longer covers it. So we're going to pull the plug. I don't care about your religious uh, beliefs. This is, there's no more. In it. Where are we going to stop? Where are we going to stop with this? Isaac Abraham, I understand your passion with this. It is a, 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 an issue that every single day people in New York and around the country wake up to new news of, of new measles cases. And something has to be done in some capacity. I understand you disagree with uh, the way that the governor there and the way the legislature has handled it. And we appreciate you coming on and expressing your no, views. No, I don't disagree. I have a difference of opinion. Thank you for being with us, Isaac. Take care.